Hi there, I'm Adam Brown and in the next 20 minutes we're going to talk about performance testing. All you're going to need at this point are your ears and eyes, we're just really looking at theoretical points at this point, there's no software involved and we're going to cover things like why do performance testing, what is it, can I get away without it, anatomy of a test and just a few basic, basic things. So straight into it, why do performance testing? Well you may be asking yourselves these questions. You may be asking uh, why uh, are we ready to go live? Uh, maybe your boss or your customer is asking these questions and they're going to be broken down into things like well how's our application going to deal with unexpected loads such as tra traffic spikes um, what about our failover, our load balancing, is that working correctly, do we know this how reliable is our application what will happen if we leave it running over the weekend, will someone need to come in and reboot it it might be that you've already de deployed an application and performance is poor so you need to know why that is. Is it down to design or you might just actually want to find where the bottlenecks are in the application. Looking at the uh, what the business does you need to know that your application can comply with the business performance requirements. So for example the business knows it needs to sell so many insurance policies or books or whatever it might be in one day and most of that business will be done in key critical hours. So can the application deal with the busiest hours? it might be that you already have an existing application and you need to understand how will this new uh, this this new version of the application compare with the old version and finally it might be just a case that you want to know what happens if your business grows say for example next year we have a phenomenal year and we double our transactions how's the application going to deal with that what is the maximum amount of throughput we can handle i.e. sales per second or concurrent users maximum concurrent users that the application can deal with well performance testing can answer these questions if you don't know the answers to these questions then eventually your customers will find them out and probably the hard way so we don't really want our customers to end up looking like this guy so let's swiftly move on because performance testing is really all about risk and you've got a choice do it or don't do it so here we've got a, a grid that will illustrate what are, what are the outcomes of uh, of those cases. So if we have a high performance application in in this section here and a poor performance application here, but the thing is we do not know how the application performs. So what if we take the action of doing nothing, and the application is a high performance application? Well, well hey, we're in the money. It, we've spent no money and we've got away scot free. It was a bit of a gamble, but hey, it paid off. Well, the thing is, you still don't know anything about the performance of your application. You know it works in that scenario, but what will happen, what, what, what are the upper limits of the application? What's going to happen over the weekend? Uh, what's going to happen over the month if you leave the application running? So we know nothing about the, uh, the, uh, the performance of the application uh, and, and its upper limits and so on what if we do evaluate the performance of the application and it is high performance well we've burnt money right I mean we could have got away without that well yes true but there is always a return on our action because from that cost of effort we now understand the limits of the application we understand the uh, the performance of the application so what if the application doesn't perform very well well can your business afford to take that risk what would that mean to your business if the application does not perform it's something you need to evaluate and if it doesn't perform and we evaluate it well that's happy days because we we've avoided the cat catastrophe we know early on that we we're not going to put this application live on on the date that we propose or if we are that we, we know we need to step up efforts and take remedial action very quickly to make sure that we have a high performance application at the end of the day so ultimately evaluation of performance is always going to reap benefits by doing nothing you have risk the benefits of doing nothing are very small with the amount of time and effort and cost that you save on the downside it could mean absolute catastrophe so it really is a question of risk and how much do you want to take so what is performance testing well it's also known as load testing stress testing performance testing capacity testing volume and my least favorite of all non-functional testing Effectively, it is to appraise end user experience in realistic scenarios uh, on your target application. Uh, it will allow you to assess machine and infrastructure capability. Performance testing 
uh, load stress capacity are all based on business requirements. It's a professional approach to evaluating the performance of an application. It requires the simulation of real load scenarios running against your target applications or websites. So that means concurrent users. Now concurrent users are not the be all and end all of a performance test. It's only one part. It's an important part um, but really an equal, equally important part is having a mix of relevant transactions. For example if you just uh, have 10,000 users hitting your home page you're not testing the web application. All you're testing is the web server. In the case of a content management server, then yeah, it's going to hit the hit the backend database, and that might be all you need to do. It might be a, a very simple sales website or something like this. Uh, but for testing sophisticated web applications, then you really do need a mix of relevant transactions running at a correct pacing, so that's the speed at which each of the users is is running at, and accurately and correctly generated load. The load must be generated conforming to HTTP standards. Uh, if you're following all those four points then you end up with realistic load which will then give you uh, a fingerprint of the response time that the application will deliver. In fact it will give you the, the response time that you can expect and also the transaction rate that we know that the application can deal with at its peak. And then the maximum supported number of concurrent users if we're doing a stress test. Now this does require the use of tools and there are a lot of tools out there. There's a whole commercial and technical spectrum. There's all the way through to the most expensive commercial tools down to uh, what people might think of as free software or open source software really. There is still a cost which has to be evaluated to uh, getting these tools set up. Which leads us on to a technical spectrum. You go all the way down to a purely script based approach, no GUI at all, to something that is really oversimplified and uh, gives you no control or visibility over the, the load that you're generating. There's also a software as a service which is certainly suitable for public web applications and really only simple transactions. So if you've got a complex web app quite often these vendors are not able to, uh, to work with you. The thing is it has to be realistic. Really I would say do it properly or just don't do it at all because if you uh, if you do it incorrectly and uh, use uh, the incorrect methods and tools you can end up with uh, a performance false negative or a performance false positive a false negative uh, for example would be uh, if you just take any old tool and just uh, record some scenarios without really understanding what you're doing fire it at maximum rate using all the CPU power that you have and the tool says hey look I broke the web up the performance is terrible the response times are awful the thing is that test probably wasn't realistic and, and more than likely went way over and beyond the performance requirements from the business. So don't waste time on trying to fix an application that's actually not broken. On the other hand, a tool or, or service might come back and say, well, this application is performing fine. In fact, we had a situation with a bank where they had a very well understood set of business performance requirements and it was actually a call center application where users would come in at 9 and work till 5 and work all day. And there were a thousand of these users. So they replicated those scenarios and used a tool to do that. The tool came back with uh, very positive results and the application seemed to perform. When the application went live, in fact, only 250 of the users could actually get to work. This was down to the fact that the application couldn't deal with more than 250 users of real load and the fact that the tool had not generated the, lo the load correctly and accurately. This is back in the day of HTTP 1.0 and the number of connected threads per user was not accurate and in fact the load that was generated was well below the equivalent footprint that real users would have generated. So what is performance testing? Well if we take a look at normal expected utilization and maximum design capacity then our tests are going to fall somewhere in between that. So a stress test is where we escalate the amount of load over time until we find the limits of the system. We run a load test where we understand the business requirements very well and can ramp up the load, leave it running at a plateau until we're happy that the performance is not continuing to degrade and then ramp down the load. And what we're looking for in that plateau is an equilibrium. We're, we're looking for CPU levels to stay the same, response times to stay the same, memory levels to stay the same. A soak test would be something that would run over a weekend or over a 24 hour per period and we would be looking generally for things like memory leaks. And finally a spike test where we go over and above the maximum design capacity just to see how the application can deal with a, a big spike in load. Generally what you'll find is there'll be a ri ripple effect but what we're looking for is for the application not to fall over. So here we're looking at the results of a real test. What we have is response time for a particular page. 
which uh, I've, I've blacked out the uh, the name of this page because it gives away the, um, the the customer. The um, elapsed time. So we started the test here and we ran for 25 minutes. So the test continued to run. We we've got the the blue line here, which is the response time, and we can see it's less than two and a half seconds. So that's great. We've got the orange line, which denotes the number of users on the system, which is around about 500, 525 users at this point here. Everything's fine. If we were modeling this and basing it on CPU cycles, then we could we could maybe say, depending on what the CPU monitor was telling us, well, we could go to a thousand users. But the thing is, with modeling, you can't model performance bugs. You can't expect a bug to be there when you're not expecting it to be there. So really you still have to do a performance test. And this is what we found. Once we went over 500 users, performance really degraded and response time went through the roof. So the, the, the worst response time we saw was over a minute, close to a minute and a half. And really it's at this point that the system became unusable. These days with fast broadband networks people don't wait much much more than around five seconds to get a response for their page and in fact this is what we would call the knee in the curve uh, we get a linear degradation until you get to a point where response time is really not good enough in fact this is quite a steep uh, a steep knee we didn't really have much of a linear degradation at, at this point and we very quickly got to a point where we were in gridlock and response time was just absolutely unacceptable so performance engineering. So this is the application of performance testing into an application lifecycle. We start with the analysis phase where we understand the business requirements and start to form the footprint of the load that we need to generate. At this point you might want to start running proof of concepts on the tools that you think might be suitable for the job. We then move on to the planning phase where we detail our test schedule. So what types of users do we want to simulate? Some users uh, making sales, some users doing searches, some users doing updates and then we define how many of those types of users will be running in the test. For example 90% might be browsing a site and maybe 5% will be buying it and then another 5% might be doing some uh, other set of arbitrary transactions on the site. Also part of the planning phase is where we put together our critical paths through the application so the user journeys and we're going to use that to capture our scenarios in in the tool so ultimately the tool is generating a script right so we do that with record and playback we use those scripts to put together our scenarios and really importantly we take the data requirements if you're going to do a load test with a hundred users in many cases it's very important they, that they are unique users so you need to have some uh, user accounts on the system Incidentally, you can also use a tool to generate this test data using the application interface itself. Also consider with data, if you're going to update 10,000 policies, you're going to need quite a few thousand insurance policy IDs in order to make sure that you're not getting some kind of deadlock with two users trying to update uh, one insurance policy. I'm taking the scenario of an insurance website here, that two users are trying to update the same policy at one time. Then we move on to the execution phase. This can be anything from 2 hours to 24 hours depending on the type of test that we're running and depending on the tool you might be able to start to get some results as the test is running while it's in runtime. and based on that you'll be able to know whether to call the test off if it's running particularly badly the application or continue to the end. Now using something like Agile Load at that point as soon as it's finished Agile Load can then start to make recommendations which are very useful for system tuning and this becomes a cyclical process test, tune, test, tune test until we're at a point where the performance engineering cycle is over and the results can be documented properly in a report and the recommendations if there are any further recommendations can be made. So what does a performance test look like? Well effectively we're trying to simulate this a number of users and they're going to be going in through the network infrastructure into the application so a number of web servers application servers and database so what we do is we replace those users with some hardware and software so we use agile load center to control agile load injectors now these injectors can run on the same machine as agile load center or if you've got a particularly large performance test requirement you might need to distribute that onto several machines or you might want to distribute the load around the world for example or around your network in order to get an insight on response times from different network locations so we generate load on the application, we hit the web server which in turn makes 
service request to the application server which in turn makes database requests to the database and then it sends messages back up the stack so we end up with an end-to-end -end performance test while this is running agile load can also monitor the performance of each of our infrastructure nodes so things like CPU or database calls or uh, memory utilization or network utilization and so on and it pulls this all together and puts it into agile load center so what do we get as an output well we spent a lot of time and effort creating our input which is designing the tests uh, capturing the user journeys as scripts uh, plugging the data in setting up the the platforms so that's time and effort really the output is the report and once you if you're a consultant once you walk away from site or if you're uh, working internally once you walk away from a project that is really how you will be judged because that is the sum total of the effort of the performance testing cycle so the report has got to be very good in the case of agile load this is automatically generate but what we do suggest is that uh, whoever's done the test also adds to that point an executive summary for the key findings from the test now before the report is generated really the results can give you a very early insight into the performance of the application in fact even when the test is running and that might be the number of virtual users attained the response times any errors that we're getting back performance of different parts of the architecture like the web server or application server and so on and it's a great way to get a first view of performance and start to make a plan as to whether you're going to continue the test or stop the test and then go to do some tuning once the test has stopped you can then start to make some recommendations based on the output of your monitors Agile load is pretty good for this using anomaly detection. You may or may not have also some performance engineers available with expertise on hand, but anomaly detection itself can actually start to give you ideas about the first steps for making remedial action, i.e. fixing the performance bugs. So why would you choose Agile Load? Well, preparation time is massively reduced. You'll see in the videos that you can teach Agile Load how to deal with complex transactions. So the more you use Agile Load, the more efficient it becomes. And this can save hours and hours, if not days, when it comes to performance testing. It has a very broad monitoring capability and anomaly detection uses expertise built into Agile Load to analyze results and help make recommendations to you. Also it has a very customizable reporting capability so within minutes you can have reports for project manager level, for database administrator level and for test manager level using the automated report output and the fact that it's customizable is you can control the level of detail and the specific items that you want in that report. And the final two points, well it's free for setup, preparation and small tests. Large tests with Agile Load have the lowest cost on the market and we don't charge any more for cloud testing. For example, if you have an Amazon EC2 account, we can just plug into that and then use those Amazon data centers around the world, West Coast, East Coast, Asia, South America, Europe and I believe South Africa now as well to generate load from around the world. So how does Agile Load compare to other tools? We compared it to a very well established commercial tool and found that we had 30 to 45 percent savings. Making a lot of those savings in the, the modeling of user transactions, i.e. capture of and generation of scripts, and simulation debugging. Now Agile Load has got this ability to compare captured traffic with generated traffic and will highlight areas that might be, need to be addressed in the script that's produced, allowing you to very quickly produce a correct and accurate script. Load simulation is also simple. Our very lightweight injector can be deployed simply and easily, either using uh, any cloud infrastructure or machines that you have in your data center. And the analysis and diagnostics using built-in expertise in Agile Load will help you quickly find remedial action for your performance problems, expediating tuning, modification, and correcting. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, reporting is very fast and the quality of reports is very high. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Head over to agilelow.com to see more videos and more technical videos or to download Agile Load itself or take a look on the forums or at our blog. So hopefully see you there. Thanks. Bye-bye.